So I'm going to be talking about vectors in component form before. You've done this before, uh, so it's going to be fairly quick again. Uh, but I think that we might have misunderstood a few bits, so I'm going to I'm going to go through it. Here's a vector, a straight line traveling in that direction. Um, we'll call this A, and we'll call this B, which of course makes that vector AB. A little arrow above it. Um, now, it would be useful to be able to talk about it in terms of like this direction and this direction. Because if I can draw in an arrow like that and an arrow like that, we could say that vector AB is equal to whatever this vector happens to be plus whatever that vector happens to be. And we can talk about this u vector being in the horizontal direction, and we talk about this v vector being in the vertical direction. Uh, now, what we're going to do is create a single vector of length 1. Uh, so I'll call that vector uh, in the horizontal direction i. So what is, that, what is this vector? It is a vector, i is a vector, Unit 1, length, horizontal, direction. So it's important to think about i not as a direction, but as an actual vector with some length, length 1. Now, similarly, we can call uh, this vector j, and that's a vector, unit 1, length, in the vertical direction. Alright, so if I've uh, got some vector, whatever it might be, let's just draw another one really quickly, I can count up how many unit 1 vectors there are. Let's say there's an i vector and another i vector and another i vector. So that means that that's three i vectors. And maybe there's one, two, three, Four. Obviously, they're all the same length. Uh, maybe there's four J vectors there. So now I can call vector AB. Uh, let's call this one AB. A, B. I can call it 3I plus 4J. Because I'm adding that vector, which is 3I, plus that vector, 4J, to make that vector. So that's what the I and the J are. The vectors of a length, length 1. Now, of course, this is useful uh, for many reasons, but one of the reasons it's useful is because it creates this nice little right angle triangle there. If we've got a right angle triangle, finding the length of this vector, hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, is going to be really straightforward. So if we want to know the magnitude, we use these two little lines around it, A, B with the arrow, and then boom, boom. That says we're looking for the magnitude. And that's going to be equal to uh, X squared plus... Um, y squared, where x and y are these bits here. All right, it's just Pythagoras' theorem. All right, so uh, we've got 3 squared plus 4 squared, square root. Uh, it's going to be the square root of 25, which, of course, is 5. So the magnitude, the length of vector AB is 5. We've done magnitudes before. This is just a little recap. And that brings us to the unit vector. All right, so the unit vector, unit vector, so we've got a vector u, is the vector in direction u of length 1. So if we look at, keep looking at this vector here, let's call that vector u for now. Uh, if we want to find its unit vector, we're saying, all right, I want to take the vector. I want it to be the same, but I just want to scale it down so the length of it is equal to 1. Now, that new vector that I've created that is just that long but in that direction is called the unit vector of that particular vector. All right, so a formula for it. If we want to find the unit um, vector, we need to know uh, the magnitude and we need to know the vector itself. So if we take the vector and then divide it by its magnitude, we'll essentially be scaling it down. So it's going to be equal to the vector divided by, no, don't use that, divided by 
the magnitude of the vector. All right, so we know what the vector is. The vector is um, 3i plus 4j. And then we're going to divide by the magnitude of the vector, which we've already calculated here, uh, but I'll just do it again, uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared. So we know that that's going to give us 3i plus 4j over um, 5. It's not really, that's sort of correct, but it's not really polite to leave it like that. We should put it into its components. 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. And not to labour the point too much, but what that means is that if I create a vector by going 3 fifths of an i vector across, so that's got length 3 fifths, that's 3 fifths of i, and then I go 4 fifths of j up, what I will have created is a vector of length 1. Uh, so I can say that that's vector u, and it's going to be equal to 1. The magnitude of it's going to be equal to 1. And I've just created that vector there. That's what our unit vector is. All right, so what I'm going to do here is uh, take two position vectors, O, A, and O, B, so a little Cartesian plane here, moving from O to A, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So we've got one that looks like that. That's O, A, that's point A there. And OB looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B, like that. And then we're trying to find AB. We're trying to find this vector down there like that. Okay, so here's how we do it. Neat little formula. Now, AB, the vector AB, is going to be equal to... Now, see the letter A here? All right, so I'm going to do A first, AO. And then the letter B here, that's at the end. I'm going to put that at the end. Oops, not, at the, not there. At the end, the end end. All right, so make that explicit. A is at the start, A is at the start, B is at the end, B is at the end. And we've got these two O's here. So now we can say that vector AB is equal to AO plus OB. Uh, now, why is that uh, useful, or what do I do with that now? Well, I know OA is 3i plus 2j, so that's OA in that direction. But I don't want OA. I want to go the other way. I want AO. Now, to flip a vector around, to take that vector and flip it around so that it's no longer OA, but it's AO, I just need to multiply it by negative 1. So, AO is equal to negative OA. OB, well, I already know OB, so I'm fine with that. All right, now I can do a little bit of working here. Um, so, negative OA is equal to negative 1 times um, OA plus 2J plus OB, which is 4i minus 5j. Alright, so I get negative 3i, negative 2j, plus 4i minus 5j, and I get negative 3i plus 4j, uh, that's just i, and I get negative 2j minus 5j is negative 7j. And you can see from my image that uh, that's what it's going to look like. It's moving 1 across, and it's moving 7 down. i minus 7j. That's the new vector, vector ab. All right, we can probably just do one more thing with that little, little bit of work. So using the same numbers, using the same vectors, I can find om, m being the midpoint between a and b. So it's going to be here somewhere. And OM is the vector that goes from the origin to that point. So that's what we're aiming for here. So our formula for finding the, the midpoint vector is equal to half um, OA plus OB.
And given everything's in component form, very straightforward here. One half uh, OA, so 3i plus 2j, plus uh, OB, 4i minus 5j. So we get one half, 3i plus 4j is 7, uh, 4, 3i plus 4i is 7i, and 2j minus 5j is minus 3j. Um, we could leave it like that if we had to, but it makes more sense to do 7, and, 7 over 2i minus 3 over 2j. Alright, uh, I better check that. Uh, 3.5i, so it looks like I'm moving about 3.5 across, because uh, that was 3 and that was 4, so about 3.5, that makes sense. Um, and then negative 3 over 2j, move out of the way a little bit, negative 3 over 2j, um, that means I'm moving negative 1.5, I'm moving 1.5 down, and that looks like about right. So that's our OM. Um, we've seen that before, but it's using component form. It's pretty straightforward now, it just becomes some pretty basic algebra. Okay, that's heaps of stuff on vectors in component form. We've looked at the I and J components, which are unit vectors. We've looked at magnitude. We've looked at unit vectors and what the unit vector is. Um, we've looked at uh, finding a vector between two position vectors using component form. And then finally, we found a midpoint vector.